All right, it's one of the best games of the year, you guys, for the Georgia Bulldogs. It is the Georgia-Florida game in Jacksonville. Reggie Chavin, he is down there in the Sunshine State, and he has more on how the dogs plan to try to stop a very impressive Gator offense. Welcome out to Everbank Stadium for Georgia versus Florida week number 101 or 102, depending on who you ask. Here in Jacksonville, Florida, the same place they've played this game almost every year since 1933. And the 2023 game should be a whole lot of fun and also a real challenge for this Georgia defense. Up against a Florida team that's playing well as of late. Winners of five of the last six since dropping their season opener. And they've got a quarterback that's leading the way named Graham Mertz, who's really putting on a show. They have a quarterback that's extremely hot and accurate. He knows exactly what he's doing in the system. Um, he understands how to do it. They got a quarterback that really understands, okay, if this is not there, I'm doing this. And he can run. So they're, they're a very complete uh, offense, and they, they, they're very methodical. Uh, those guys do a, a great job of um, making splash plays, and I say that because they, they complement each other very well. They're running backs. Um, those guys are very great backs, one of the best in the SEC, one of the best running backs that will play all throughout the season. And we pride ourselves on stopping the run, so that's something that we have to do this week in order to be victorious. And the quarterback's been playing at a very high level. Um, the guy completely, I mean, Merce is completing like 76% of his passes. That's that's crazy if you, you know what I'm saying, if you, you watch football for real. Graham Mertz is coming off his first ever 400-yard passing game and a win against South Carolina last week. The fans are here in town, ready to hope to see their team play well against that offense. Kickoff set for 3.30 here in Jacksonville. We'll have all your coverage all day long. Cover Georgia football here in Jacksonville. I'm Reggie Chapman, 11 Live Sports. All right, Reggie, thank you. Great job. We only have a couple more of these things to hand out. This is my favorite part. Who's going to get this week's helmet sticker? The answer is after the break. Okay, is this the same thing from 10.30? Okay. Okay, then I'll let uh, Madison, you can roll on that then. I'm going to be here this time. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's okay. We live and we learn, you know? Sorry, I believe in you.
Welcome back, everybody. For the first time in more than six months, the Atlanta Hawks are back at State Farm Arena. So welcome back, basketball. And tonight they welcomed in the New York Knicks. Always a fun rivalry, and the Hawks hoping to have a better night offensively than they did on Wednesday. Again, Trey Young looked pretty cool coming into the arena, but he did struggle. He went 4 of 16 on the night with six turnovers. DeAndre Hunter, though, he led the way for the Hawks. 27 points for him on 8 of 13 shooting. But the Hawks, they just couldn't find an answer to Jalen Brunson. Go figure. 31 points for him tonight with eight three-pointers. The Hawks dropped the home opener 126-120. They're now 0-2 to start the season. But, hey, there's always more basketball. They're going to have a chance to get their first win of the year on Sunday. It'll be a tough road matchup against Milwaukee. All right, let's wrap some things up with some kudos for someone getting a region crowd, but not just securing the victory, but the way that they were able to finish the game. Check out Zykeem Barham with the pick six to seal the win. This kid has been shining on both sides of the ball this year for Spalding. He's a running back. He's a linebacker. He helped his team put this thing away this evening. So congratulations to the Spalding Jaguars region champions for the first time in 20 years. You guys, that's such a big accomplishment. Congratulations to you. Also home of a current Atlanta Falcon. Awesome in the secondary. D. Alford, he was in the house tonight. Maybe that gave way to them winning that we didn't crown. Really cool stuff.